Hello, my name is Todd Knoll. I'm the executive chef of Jordan Winery. Today we'll be preparing the Jordan Estate Garden Escabeche. Escabeche is traditionally a form of preservation by pickling. In this case, for the Jordan Estate tour, we will be taking the idea of the escabeche and using the subtleties of our garden and toning down the acidity so as to pair with our Jordan Estate Chardonnay. The heart of any escabeche is the vinaigrette. And now in this case, not only do I want to pair with wine, but I also want it specific to Sonoma in the area as well. So we're going to tone down the acidity and we're going to use local ingredients whenever possible. So a typical French vinaigrette would be three parts oil to one part vinegar. In this case, again, to bring tone down the acidity, we're going four and a half parts oil to one part vinegar. The vinegar we're using is Gravenstein apple. I also use um, seasoned rice wine vinegar. I want a mild flavor profile. I do not want anything assertive, anything that's going to pull away from our wine or to show it as flat. The first step in our Escabeche vinaigrette is creating our infused vinegar. So, and the first step of it, creating any infused vinegar is toasting the spices. Readily available from Penzi Spices as a substitution if you're caught in a pinch, this is pickling spice. They're available online or at their retail shops. So into a hot pan, dry skillet, we're gonna add all of the spices that we've selected for this particular infusion. You don't wanna burn them, but you do wanna see just a touch of smoke. Aleppo pepper, our black peppercorns. So we have our spice mixture. To this, we will add about one shallot, Meyer lemon zest, and a little celery. We add the citrus and the shallots because I don't want to use it towards the end with the introduction of a fat because I do not want to toast them. I need, I need an olive oil to slightly saute them and sweat them. After the spices have been toasted, we introduce a tablespoon of our extra virgin olive oil. We want to sweat the shallots. We want to caramelize them. We want to caramelize their sugars. And this is a fantastic bridging element to the Chardonnay. Shallots, garlic. We also have the, the peppers in here. We have the floral notes, the citrus notes of the Meyer lemon without the acidity, which would compete with the acidity in our Chardonnay. So once those have been sweated down, then we introduce our Gravenstein apple vinegar, combined with a touch of seasoned rice wine vinegar. I chose the Gravenstein apple vinegar because I like the, the flavor profile with the Chardonnay. It also is local to the area, so as much as possible, we want to keep this Sonoma-centric. And now to this, we can add our fresh herbs. The fresh herbs are our most delicate component, so we're going to add the fresh herbs last. Simply bring this to a simmer and set it aside for 15 minutes to allow the herbs, spices, and lemon zest to infuse the vinegar. At this point, our, our vinegar has been infusing for 15 minutes. I prefer to infuse for approximately three hours. And now we can complete our vinaigrette. We brought it back up to heat. And what I found with our hot vinaigrettes as we're gonna use it and we're gonna pickle with a warm vinaigrette, if I have the dish hot, I can emulsify it by swirling the pan and going straight in with my extra virgin olive oil and grapeseed oil. This is gonna break, it's not gonna hold as I don't have mustard or egg yolk in it, but it's gonna give me a more realistic uh, picture of, of the final vinaigrette that I'm gonna be dealing with. Now it comes down to a stylistic uh, decision here. We can either pour directly over the vegetables, which have been cooked 80%, 80 to 90%, and we can leave all these bits and pieces, these whole herbs, the zest inside, or in this case, we can pour through a strainer and the smaller, smaller spices will fall through your celery seed and so forth. So we're hot here. We're coming into our prepared vegetables with fresh herbs. These have been cooked either by blanching, or cook sous vide in a food saver bag and then in boiling water. You can do it by grilling and then arresting the cooking in ice water. Any way you can come to a 90%, we still want some freshness to it, some biteness to it, but we want it cooked, but just so. So you wanna press all of your solids through. And now we have our seasoned hot vinaigrette over our fresh vegetables and herbs. And at this point, we allow them to pickle. 
To finish the escabeche for our Jordan Estate tour, this is where the fun starts. So we have our pickled vegetables and we've gone to the garden and we've picked up our little accents. Now it can be served as an individual dish as one would serve a crudité, or it can also be served as a component to another dish. Or if you had a rich, I like it in a barbecue if I'm serving say a carnitas or something rich, that slight acidity is gonna cut right through that rich meal as will the, uh, the wine component in the dish. I love to finish um, the escabeche or any of my dishes with the fresh herb garnishes and blossoms. Most people aren't aware that, that you get a subtle note of the more familiar herb in the blossom, um, particularly in basil. I love the arugula. You get a little bit of the heat, but not so aggressive. So here is our finished escabeche. A little snapshot of the Jordan Garden. It can either be be enjoyed as a crudité, as a salad on its on its own, standalone salad. You will find with this recipe, the recipe um, is far more vinaigrette than is required. But the vinaigrette can be used over and over again for up to a week. And with each use, as it sits in the vegetables and pickles, it's taking on more and more of the subtleties of our vegetables. So. The last step, along with some finishing salt, is a bit of our vinaigrette, which has taken on the herbs, the subtleties of the vegetables, the saffron colors begin to come out, and then we just finish with a touch of the fleur de sel.